So my Firestorm talk is going to be my attempt to convince you that you should adapt this new hobby, which is called printmaking. And um, one of the things I'm going to also try to convince you is that printmaking can kind of be anything and everything. Um, so these are some fun like rubber stamp things that I've carved in the past. But to begin this talk, let's kind of start from the ground up, right? What is printmaking? And uh, I went to the, to the only source I could think of, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, which defines printmaking as an artistic process based on the principle of transferring images from a matrix onto another surface, most often paper or fabric. So what might start to come to mind for you is maybe the printing press. Um, there's those cool screen printing machines that are used on t-shirts. Um, maybe you got a stamp on your passport um, when you went on a trip somewhere. Um, or uh, what I th thought of is I have a, a little flower pot that looks just like this and it's a little imprint of a leaf. Um, and when I started to kind of wax about printmaking, I thought, what makes this um, you know, a little intentional print of a leaf so different than a fossil. It's kind of like the same thing, right? But just unintentionally nature like happened. And then many, many years later, we discovered this. Um, so why don't we call this art? And why do we call this art? Um, so I'm kind of going to skew the definition a little bit and include fossil making under this definition of printmaking. And I would say fossil making is pretty much the exact same thing, but perhaps it's just not an artistic process. Um, so now I'm going with this, there's printmaking and then there's fossil making. And my new definition of the two um, is describing printmaking as intentional, creative and artistic and fossil making as more coincidental, factual information based, just really capturing exactly what exists around you um, at a certain time. Um, but in, in one keyword, uh, I wanted you to try to spot the difference between these two pictures because they're really, I don't know, they're really similar. And I, it took me quite a while to really crack the code on this one, but I would say the main difference between this printmaking and fossil making, I don't know which is left, which is right, um, is intention. Um, spoiler, the, I'm saying the left is printmaking. Um, so I thought it was a really cool kind of comparison to say, um, your artistic printmaking is really just you intentionally capturing what's around you, either whether it's something in the natural world or something that you're creating and deciding to capture. Um, and you can continue capturing, right? Because you can make as many prints as you want. So um, I'd like to add to the definition that not only is printmaking what the Metropolitan Museum of Art says, but it's also intentionally preserving the natural or uniquely created world around oneself. And that is something you can do. So if you need another reason to get into print printmaking, um, I'm going to give you one. And that is that I personally guarantee that right after this talk, actually right after Firestorm, because you should stick around for the other talks, you can start making printing uh, or prints, sorry, with whatever supplies you have around you at home. So I've made this scale of difficulty and um, what I want our kind of inspiration slash theme to be are tree prints. Um, so the scale goes from the left side of the screen, something you can make with really few supplies, little to no money and is very easy. And then on the right of the screen is something where many supplies are required, many tools, might require a bit of money invested and can be quite challenging. So I actually have a ton of props around me and we're going to make each of these prints right now, just in case you needed a little tutorial. So my first print is going to be um, Play-Doh. I have some Play-Doh, don't ask why I have it. I also sacrificed a little leaf from one of my house plants. I'm going to press this leaf into my Play-Doh and you know you can do this with whatever clay medium or squishy medium you have at home. Not sure what another squishy medium would be, maybe like a soft cheese. Um, and voila, it's very hard to capture on my very bright, bright light, but there is my tree print. And don't worry, I didn't disappoint. I also have a potato, but I already sliced it in half and I already drew a little tree on it. And with a little bit of movie magic, I actually already cut it with a knife into the shape of a tree. And what do you know, I also have a little stamp pack here. So I haven't tried this before, but I'm going to, okay, yeah, press my potato into my stamp pad and it's getting green. I have a piece of paper. I'm gonna press my potato stamp 
and it's a little faint, but I mean, not bad. Um, my other stamp is luckily at one that I've already made out of an eraser. And um, if you have like, you need quite a sharp knife for this, but I have a set of X-Acto knives and some carving tools. Um, you can carve an eraser like this into a little tree like this. So it's kind of hard to see, but you have like some negative and positive space, like some stuff sticking outward, some, st some stuff sticking back. So I'm gonna use that same ink pad. Hopefully it's not too disturbed from the potato. Add some ink, press it on my paper. And I didn't really apply even pressure, but there's my tree. And last but not least, I have a whole log here and we're going to make a print out of that. Yeah, you better believe me. So I, I pulled out all the stops for this one. I actually have some pretty expensive ink over here and then I have a, a fun rolling tool. So I've coated my roller with ink. I'm actually going to rub this on the log. This is the one that took the most time. Um, I had to sand this log. I had to burn it with a torch. And then I had to blow some pressurized air on it to get all the ash out. And then I had to shellac it with this um, stain so that it didn't um, you know, absorb the ink too much. But that's all, when that's all said and done, you can get to the point of applying ink. And I'm gonna put my log on my desk and then I'm gonna add the paper on top. Sometimes it's helpful if you have like a jar or something to apply even pressure. All right. And let's see. I'm going to remove my paper and there's my tree print. So those are four um, different printmaking techniques. Um, I'm not sure if they would artistically be classified as such, but that's what I'm calling them. And if you have a potato in your fridge, you can become an artist tonight.